Hey, and welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a simple custom throttle in Blender using the Metapol. The method for this video comes from the YouTube with Default Cube. I will leave a link to his YouTube channel down in the description. So with that, let's get started. With Blender open, we're going to go into Top View, Orthographic View, and then we want to Shift A and add a Metapol. And then with the Metapol selected, we're going to head over to the Data, change the resolution from 0.4 to 0.2. This will just make it smoother. Or before we add anything else, we're gonna make the metal ball a bit smaller by the scale, 2.4, zoom in a bit. And then now we're gonna add a curve, Bezier circle. Then we're gonna head into edit mode with the Bezier circle selected. Then we're gonna move it on the Y axis by one value. Then we're gonna head back into object mode. And then we're gonna add another metal ball. And then this metal ball, we're gonna set its value to 0.3 for scale. And then we're gonna head over to the constraints, add a new constraint, follow path. The path we're following is the Bezier circle we created. And then that will be it. And then select the Bezier circle, head over to the rotation for Z, select it, and then enter hash frame divided by 32. You can see it moves around on the Z axis on its own. So we're gonna change the end frame from 250 to 200. And then we're gonna head over to the render or is it by the output? Yeah, the output frame rate from 24, change it to 60. And then if you play the animation again, see it has sped up a bit and that's what we want. And then we're gonna select the metal ball, the second one we added. And then we're gonna head over to the constraint and then here, which is offset, I'm gonna select it. And then here also gonna set hash frame, and then that's it. So now if we play the animation, you can see the metal ball now rotates on the Bezier circle, and the Bezier circle rotates on the Z axis, and then the two metal balls interact as well. And then this is pretty much the whole animation, but I'm gonna add a couple more. So take the Bezier curve, Shift D, exit, head into edit mode, change the Y to zero, change the X to negative one, then head back to project mode, shift D again, back into edit from negative one to one, back into object mode, and then we're gonna take the second metal ball, duplicate it, head out, and then change its constraint from the first basic circle to the second basic circle. Then by the offset, we're gonna add 33.3, and then we want to do the same for the other one as well. Select the metal ball, the second one we created, shift D, change each constraint to the third Bezier circle, change the offset and add plus 66.6. .6. And then now we play the animation. This is what it looks like now. So that's good enough. And then we're gonna select the first metal ball that we created, head over to the material, create new material, Change it from your principal to an animation. Change the color. I'm gonna change it to the regular color for the tutorial series. Then the strength from one to 10. And then if we go into rendered mode, you can see there is now a color emitting from the metal balls. If you select any of the other metal balls apart from the first one, the material will not be applied. So you have to make sure that the material you create is on the, the original metal balls that was added to the scene. And then we're gonna add a camera, add camera, and then we're gonna press zero to go into camera view and then just set it up properly so that everything is within frame. Okay, let's just see at the extremities, drag it out a bit. I think that should be good enough, let's see. Okay, drag it out a bit more. Okay, that's fine. Everything is now covered within the frame and then I'm gonna add a little bit of bloom, but you can't add bloom the way we used to add bloom in Eevee. We research select Eevee and then on the settings you'll find the bloom there. So either way, the, the method for adding bloom to Eevee or cycles will be the same. I'm just gonna stick with cycles. And then before we do that, just remember to head over to film and then remember to check transparent so that you get the transparent background. And then by the render output, PNG, RGBA, and then your color depth incorporation you can choose to your liking. These are all the settings. Render region. Just make sure that you only render out this to make it a little bit quicker. And then we're gonna render out an image, close the results, and then we're gonna head over to compositing. And then in the compositor, select use nodes, and then shift A. 
look for a viewer and then drag from the render layers image and connect that to the viewer drag these two nodes the composite viewer over to the side if you hold shift right click and drag over the two noodles it will combine them into one and then now to add the bloom we're going to shift a and then look for glare and then just drop this over the noodle and then we now have that and then the one i'm going to use is the ghost glow if you want to use the bloom it's the first option and then it's you're going to have to alter some of the settings because it's a bit much i'm going to stick to the four glow I'm going to change the size to something like seven just to make it look more like a, a rim rather than what it look like i'm happy with that and then i'm going to head back to the output select the output folder and then once you select your output folder to render out all the frames you're going to press ctrl f12 and then i'll come back once everything has been rendered out I'm done reading out all the frames. Midway I did switch from Cycles to Eevee simply because Cycles was taking a while to render out the images and I didn't want to wait that long. But regardless of whether using Eevee or Cycles, these settings will be completely the same. If you don't want to wait a long time, then Eevee would be your best option. So now I'm going to check up on the render results. So within the folder, this is all the frames, all 200 of them. And then I don't know what it's like on Mac, but on Windows, if you open up the image, it's supposed to look like that. And if you look at the thumbnail, if it has something like this, that looks like it has a drop shadow, then it means there's an alpha applied to it. If it's a solid background, then that means that when you render out the image, you either didn't select it as PNG or in the render settings, you didn't go to Foam and then click transparent. If you don't click transparent, then you won't get the transparent background and you'll rather just it will by default add a solid for you. But with that, that brings us to the end of this video and until the next one.